Hi there, once again, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the focus function in Excel. So, I'm going to show you how you can use the focus function to focus values within your workbook. I have some few data. I have, some, I have X and Y values, I have sales, and then I have population. I'm going to show you how you can use the focus and then do some focus. Basically, we have the x value for the first part, the x and y values. We're going to work on that, then and as, at least move to the source and the population, and let's see how best we can focus values in the future. Okay, so we want to know what is going to happen. Maybe in a few years to come, at least with the Excel focus functions, we can at least predict, can focus, and then get some figures and see how things are going to be. In the future so without much ado let's jump straight into action and look at how we can implement that using the focus keyword so the first part i have the x values and then i have the y values i want to see if i enter six i want to focus what i'm going to get at this particular column so to do that i will enter equal to and type in focus we have different other options available over here. I'm going to use the last part that is focus. We have the focus ETS, the focus linear, and the rest. But we're going to focus. We are going to focus on just the focus for now. And it's going to take three values. We're going to have the X, the known X value, and then the known Y values. Those are the things we're going to work with. So the first column is what we're going to enter. So we're going to enter that value in this particular cell. Well, I've we have selected now so we're going to enter a value over here then we can get whatever we want to focus or appear within this particular cell so bring a comma and the next one is the known y value so this is the value we know so based based on what we know we can focus for the future so we need to have some data based on the data we can predict what is going to happen or we can focus what will happen in the future so we need a known y value so these are the value we know and we also need to select the known x value so these are the figures we know so far so based on this we, we need to close our bracket based on this we can predict what is going to happen so right now i'm having what zero okay immediately i enter six and i hit enter it's able to focus and give me the value for the y column okay so if i decide to drag this down and then all this is going to be zero for now but don't worry about that Anytime we enter any value in the S column, it's going to focus and then give us what respective value is going to be within the Y column. If I enter 7 and I hit enter, automatically it's going to focus and tell me that the Y is going to be 35. If I enter 8 over here, it's going to focus and tell me that Y is going to be 40 and in that order. If I keep entering, so I'm able to focus using the focus keyword. Even if I decide to know what is going to happen in the S column when let's say x is 90 and I hit enter it's gonna tell me that y is gonna be what 450. So we can easily use this to do forecasting. So this is the x and y values, and and I can easily implement that for the rest. So we've been able to focus whatever is gonna be at the y column based on what we know and the figures we have now. So we've been able to do that for the x and y values what about sales we have sales from 2000 to 2004 and we want to know sales that are going to at least we want to focus our sales in the years to come so how do we do that okay so let's assume i want to enter 2005 here and automatically i should be getting the focus i need to know predict or focus the sales that i'm going to get for 2000 how then do i do that you can use the focus function to do that so i'll say focus i'll say equal to then we'll use the focus keyword okay so the first column like i said is the year we're going to enter so that's the x value which is going to be here i'll we'll bring comma and we need the known value for y which is this which is the values we know for the y and we're also going to select what we know for x so this is what we know for x and then i'll close this when i enter you will not see any figure for now but immediately i enter 2005 and i hit enter automatically it's going to give me 
but the amount or the forecast for 2005 let me drag this so that the formula will take effect in this column i'll drag this down and you should be getting this but immediately i type 2006 hit enter and it's going to forecast and tell me the cost or it's going to tell my sales for 2006 so i can go ahead and then enter the race and it's going to do that from 2008 okay so you can see what exactly is happening so we've been able to generate everything we can focus and then we can tell our sales in years to come because as you may want to know them the sales for 2030 i can just type in 2030 2030 and automatically it's going to give me the sales. So in 2030, that means if I should go within this pattern, in 2030, I should, I should be making the sales around 2175 dollars. And then just some cents on it, okay, 25 cents. So this is exactly what we want to do. We can also use that to implement the population as well. You know, the population at least up to 2009. We want to get a population for the rest and we can use the same process to also get the rest of our population for years to come so the same formula we're going to use forecast so remember we have to create or we're going to get three parameters for this particular forecast function so the first one is the x value that we know the x value that we're going to enter and the known y value which is what we have bring comma and then the known x value so the values we have based on that we can do our forecast okay so i select this and i hit enter we have negative figure but immediately i enter the year 2010 i should be getting a population for 2010 so it's able to forecast the population for me for 2000 and what 10. let me drag this formula down so that i take effect in the rest of my columns and don't worry about this negative for now immediately i enter the year is automatically going to forecast the population for me so forget about these figures randomly generated figures for now if i enter 2011 i can easily get my population 2012 it's going to forecast the population we can see some patterns so 2010 we're having 2.8 million plus 2011 we're having 3.2 million plus 2012 we're having 3.6 million plus let's look at 2013 4 million plus 2014 having 4.3 million plus 2015 so we can easily target maybe 20 and see what's going to be the population like so 2015 see that we're getting a very huge figure that's around 80 million okay we can really tell that maybe in the year 2050 the population per this pattern is going to be around 80 million so this is how to use forecast function within excel remember to subscribe to this channel don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get update anytime we upload a new content thank you so much for enjoying tutorial to like come away another day remember to share this video with friends and like bye bye